This might finally be the AAA Quest 3 exclusive that takes full advantage of all of that new power. Alien Rogue Incursion was just officially announced by Servios, the studio behind games like Creed and... The Walking Dead is coming to PlayStation VR 2, Steam, and Quest this holiday season. But it was officially confirmed to Road to VR that this is a Quest 3 exclusive game. If a studio like Servios is developing a title specific to Quest 3, it means a number of things, and today we're going to talk about that and break down exactly what that means. But first, let me say we don't have any gameplay footage. We've got an official website, which we'll look at. We've got an official description, some cobbled together information I was able to find based on confirmations to different networks or websites. And we've also got a teaser trailer, which you're seeing on screen right now. There's not much to it. There's no gameplay, but we do know that it's a single player horror action game where you'll be fighting and hiding and trying to survive against xenomorphs inside of the alien universe which sounds terrifying and amazing. And if you've ever played Alien Isolation, whether in flat or the VR Mother mod, is that what they call it? I've never played it because I'm too terrified to. Then you'll know just how scary a game in VR is for the Alien franchise. And this being a native to VR is going to be incredible, I hope. But let's talk about exactly what we know and what it means for the Quest line of devices. First of all, on the official website, you're seeing some really cool key art here of a xenomorph kind of opening up its mouth and what looks to be the single player that you're going to be playing as and a new alien planet. At least I think that it's new. I'm not 100% sure if it is or not. It's definitely not Earth. So uh, hopefully we'll be not just on a spaceship this time, but maybe, maybe on a planet and we're dealing with multiple xenomorphs, according to what I've read in descriptions. In fact, let's read the actual description right now. It says, This brand new single-player action horror VR game features an original story that fully surrounds players within the terrors of the Alien universe. Designed by Alien fans for Alien fans, Servios brings their expertise to crafting this technically advanced and frightfully immersive Alien virtual reality game. Now, we know that it is created in Unreal Engine, which is great as well. It's been a collaboration between 20th Century Games and Servios to make this happen, and that's all we really know from the official website, aside from having a link to the teaser and a wish list link to the PlayStation Store. Now, looking at other websites, we're going to look at some regular gaming websites and some VR-specific websites. You can see that there was actually a press release that came out, and it says, Our team at Servios are huge fans of Alien and have been building Alien Rogue Incursion for a long time, honing our ability to pair the most technically advanced, immersive, and engaging VR experiences with best-in-class franchises. This is TQ Jefferson. He's the chief product officer at Servios. He continues and says, This Fully original story embraces all our favorite elements from 45 years of Alien, which is unbelievable. It's been around that long, really, and it holds up so well. From kinetic action and heart-pounding exploration to our terrifyingly resourceful xenomorphs, plural here, that will truly make your skin crawl. We can't wait for fans to get their hands on it this holiday season. So we know that there's multiple xenomorphs, uh, and hopefully it'll be... A terrifying game for those that like terrifying games, and not just an action shooter. Servio seems to be creating an experience that's designed specifically for horror fans in that alien, you know, no one can hear you scream kind of genre, which is really what Alien should be. There, there have been other things in the past that have been more action based, and I think this fits better for what Alien is as a franchise. An interesting thing is that Road to VR just released an article today titled "Alien Rogue Incursion Signals the Beginning of the End for Quest 2 and Quest Pro," and this is why they said that they actually got official confirmation. This is a Quest 3 specific title that's only coming to Quest 3 for the Quest line. It probably means Quest 3 Lite or whatever other things coming out later this year, but it does seem to signal that developers are starting to want to take advantage of the Quest 3's better, more powerful hardware. Sooner than I was expecting, if I'm being honest. Now, this is the holiday season this coming year, so I don't know what other titles this is going to happen to. This is the first one, and it could be the first one total. We might not see any other ones until after this. 
But that's a big deal. Their article at Road to VR specifically says, in addition to launching on PSVR 2 and Steam VR, a Servio spokesperson told Road to VR that Alien Rogue Incursion is indeed native to MetaQuest 3 only. Or in other words, not Quest 2 or Quest Pro. Given, given what we know about where standalone headsets are headed, there's a fair bit we can tease from that statement. I'm going to go on and see what they tease from it because I like their way of thinking and it, I they say it better than I could say it. It says, Alien Incursion is slated to launch holiday of 2024, putting release somewhere around eight months out from the Quest to Fire Sale, which slashes the company's last-gen VR headset to just $200 and discounted a ton of official Quest 2 accessories. So it's talking about the sale that they just did, permanent price price decrease of the Quest 2 down to $200 and all of its accessories dropping down as well. Now, I think they're still going to keep the Quest 2 around for a while, but it might not play all of the AAA type games. One thing to note, and they do know this in the Road to VR as well, is that there are other headsets being worked on. And we talked about this in a previous video by people like Lenovo, Xbox, and Asus. And because those are probably based on the current gen hardware, the newest chip by Qualcomm, uh, Snapdragon XR2 Gen 2, I think is the one we're on now, and it's based on the Horizon OS, those headsets probably will play this game and other Quest 3 exclusive games. I, they said that in the article, and I say that in, a, in agreement because if it's based on current gen hardware, which is mixed reality and VR for the newest hardware for Quest 3, if it's based on that generation, all these other headsets, even though they're going to cost more, so you're not going to necessarily want them specific to just what you'd use the Quest 3 for, they're probably going to work for that. Now, the fact that it's going to be Quest 3 only is a big deal because the Quest 3 is a more expensive headset currently, but it also means that they're probably going to really push Quest 3 Lite or whatever that hardware is going to be whenever we hear about it, probably announced and then released at Connect which is in September usually, as a lower tier device that has the same power as the Quest 3, but maybe not the same bells and whistles. We've talked about this several times in the past, so I'm not going to belabor the point. But it does mean that there is a reason to buy Quest 3 or save for Quest 3 or Quest 3 Lite over the Quest 2. Now, I personally will admit that I was wrong. I recently did a video talking about Quest 2, and it is a valid headset. But I think that there might be more people to follow along in the same line of thinking. And a few articles I read said the same thing, that because Servios, who is a big deal in VR development and game studios-wise, they've done a lot of games over the years, they're a very experienced studio, if they're switching to Quest 3 only, someone's telling them that that would be the best thing to do. Probably Meta to take advantage of the hardware and use it as a selling point for the new Quest Lite, Quest 3 headsets for the holiday season 2024. Now, this is all speculation. I don't know. And it could just be that they wanted more power, but it could signal to other developers, oh, it's okay to be Quest 3 only, and there's enough of a market there. Maybe the Quest 3 sold more than I expected it to. I, I, I thought it sold good, but I didn't know that it sold enough to support a game that was specific to Quest 3. Now, I know this is coming to Steam and PSVR 2 as well, so you got those other audiences as well. But by and large, for everything I've heard from developers, Quest tends to be the bigger of the markets out of all three of those. And if they're feeling comfortable with having a Quest 3 specific, you know, only for Quest 3, no other Quest headsets, then they must feel good about the market. Or they're being paid to do that, or they're just being told it's a good idea by Meta, or whatever the... the you know, the whole thing is. I don't know. It's all speculation on my part. But let me know in the comments what your thoughts are in this whole thing. If you think it's an encouraging sign that they're taking use of what the Quest 3 has, or is it discouraging because there's headsets out there by the millions that are not going to play this game? This is one game currently, and it's launched at the end of this year. I would be surprised if we saw any other big games launched this year that were just for the Quest 3. It could happen, but my guess is, is that this is the signal towards that. So end of 2024 could start that, and then 2025 will probably start to see some more that do that, but I think it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. There's a lot of games launching currently that are great games that launches on, on both devices, Quest 2 and Quest 3 and Quest Pro. Now, don't forget about Quest Pro here. That's also not getting this. This is also only going to Quest 3, not just Quest 2 and Quest Pro, or is they're leaving both of them out. And most developers currently are launching on all three of those. Uh, now that Quest 1 is completely retired and they're not launching on that. This doesn't mean all games after that are going to launch on just Quest 3. My guess is it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis on games that are specifically in need of that additional power to do something specific. This game, 
apparently is going to be very taxing. It's using Unreal Engine. I don't know if it's Unreal Engine 5, but it's using Unreal Engine and it's probably going to be really good looking on other platforms. And instead of having to dumb it back to the Quest 2 level, they're trying to keep it at a higher level, I'm guessing. And the AI probably has to be really good, which takes a lot more power. Uh, and because of the Xenomorphs, uh, I don't know. This is all just kind of spitballing by me. I have no idea. I want to hear what you think, though. Let me know in the comments on all of this. I'm curious if this is actually going to be the first official AAA title that's Quest 3 exclusive, and it's going to be as good as everyone hopes it will be. I don't know. The Walking Dead, Saint, not Saints and Sinners, sorry, that one's good. The Walking Dead that they did previously, I was not a fan of, and that was a licensed game as well. I hope that this one does way better than that one did, but we'll have to wait until the end of the year to see, and I really need to see some gameplay to know for sure. Anyways, this is just a ranting video of me talking about what is happening in the future of Quest 3 and Alien Rogue Incursion. Let me know what your thoughts are down in the comments. Thank you so much for watching this simple video and spitballing with me. Love to hear your thoughts. Thanks for watching again, and happy questing.